Janet, I'd like to welcome you to Carib Nation. Thank you so much for joining us. And I love your art. Your sculpture is so fine. And it's a great pleasure to bring this to our viewers. First of all, tell us why you're here in Washington at the office, uh, the lobby of the Inter-American Development Bank. And then we'll talk a little bit about where you came from. Well, thank you very much. Um, it's my pleasure to be here. Um, I'm here at the uh, Inter-American Development Bank. Um, about a year ago, our art association in Jamaica sent all our resumes up to the Inter-American Development Bank. And the um, selection committee called back and invited me to have a show. And um, this year in September, and here I am. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let me go back and talk a little bit about where you came from. and. Um, where did the art come from? Well, I come from um, Kingston, Jamaica, originally. Um, uh, I guess the art came mainly from my father. Mm -hmm. My father was a well-known landscape painter, Jerry Dunlop. He painted in oils. Um, my mother also is an incredibly creative person, and I think I was um, encouraged and um, nurtured from an early age to develop my own individuality and my art. What sort of art did you start with? Did you uh, start with watercolors? Uh, or? No, pretty well anything I could um, lay my hands on. I, naturally, because my father was an oil painter, I used to watch him paint and I used to play with oils mm -hmm. when I was little. Um, when I went away to school, I got interested in all sorts of um, anything to do with art, mm -hmm. anything creative. Mm -hmm. And um, when I did my foundation year in art school in London, I um, really fell in love with three-dimensional work. Uh -huh. And I went on to do a de degree course in sculpture. Mm -hmm. Now, how would you compare where the inspiration comes from for each of these two media? Well, the, um, the inspiration from my sculpture is definitely from my own soul journeys. I do a lot of meditation and I have these experiences, these deep, um, rich, alive experiences within meditation and open myself to all sorts of new awareness. And I think these, these sculptures are about those journeys and are about this, my, my, my body. That's why most of them are women or female yes, forms, female, yeah. because that's a form I happen to be in. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, um, I express a lot of the, the, the feelings. You'll see names like harmony and, um, and, in, and initiation and the, the evolution. Mm -hmm. And these are some of the feelings and energy feelings that I have. As a child, what would you say was the pivotal point in your life uh, that would have directed you to, because most children, they, you think they have some mm -hmm. uh, talent, they know they have some talent, the parents may recognize it and, and help them along with it. But as you said, your parents allowed you to be free to develop but what turned you into the... I, I, I started really loving art and doing it. I think it was mainly because whereas other children or my friends around me were out doing other things, I really preferred to be inside mm. painting and drawing and mm. watching daddy <laughs> whenever I could, you know. <laughs> and um, as early as age 10, actually, I won the um, first prize in the Jamaica National Festival um, competition. Um, which was done annually and mm -hmm. um, for the age groups like 10 to 14 or something like that. And so, of course, that was encouraging. Of and um, actually, I went through high school um, with the intention of doing architecture. I had this, I always liked buildings and mm -hmm. I had this great dream of being an architect. And, um, but after doing my A-levels in maths and physics yeah. and art, <laughs> I was exhausted. I so imagine. I decided instead of doing, going straight into um, architecture, I would do a foundation year in fine arts. Uh, I so I went to the Wimbledon School of Art um, in London. And that's when I really started doing three-dimensional work. And mm. I just haven't stopped. <laughs> really? My goodness. That's really That was passion. really my love, yeah. Yes. 
art often enhances other educational pursuits. Um, many people say that if you allow a child to pursue the artistic mm -hmm. side, the academic side develops very well. What kind of a student were you and what was school like for you? Oh, I was an excellent student. I mean, as I said, I did physics and maths mm. at A level. I mean, that was my, I was better at those subjects than I was at the English language or the, the history and this. So maybe they helped the art as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I th they, 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 the physics, etc., definitely helped me with the sculpture. The sculpture, I'm sure. Um, yes. In more ways than one. I think even physics and the logical thinking also has helped me to in somehow evolve my my thinking generally in my soul journeys mm. um, from the perspective of even quantum physics and some of the the physical laws that we are examining and and energy generally yeah. mm -hmm. and um, you know and getting into the metaphysical <laughs> yes <laughs> and yes. I, I think having a background in physics helped me approach that from very uh, interesting perspective. From yeah. a perspective, yeah. yeah. Talk a little bit about some of the soul journeys. Uh, identify your favorite piece and what, what was the, the journey that brought you to that? Okay, well, the, I think my favorite piece is uh, the two particular pieces that um, are very significant for me. Or three. <laughs> anyway, let's start <laughs> with, there is breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Um, a breakthrough is about breaking through self-imposed limits and fears and um, opening yourself to a whole new ex a level of aliveness. Yeah, well, the beauty a of that is that experience. You, the piece literally shows you breaking yes, through. she is breaking almost through. Almost floating in air. I mean, there, there were, there have been, that has been so significant for me because um, Every time I let go, it, it happens at so many levels. Mm. Every time I let go of fear, mm. let go of an inhibition, and, and I know they're all self-imposed, all mm. of a sudden, you know, there's a whole new level of experience on the other side. Mm. Um, I'll take one, why that one too is floating um, horizontally, is um, I was already 40 mm. when I started scuba diving. I mean, I had been living in the Caribbean most of my life, and I always had this fear. Mm -hmm. um, all of a sudden, I, it was, you know, my son started scuba diving, and he kept saying, Mom, it's wonderful. <laughs> so one day I said to my husband, you know, I'm going to try this thing. Man, it has opened me to a whole new world. Really? I now love the underwater world. My I dive goodness. as often as I can. Yeah. Uh, it, it, the sensations. The, is it freeing, I suppose? It is freeing. Yeah. It, you know, and it's so beautiful. And now, so you, pretty, I'm even and painting. especially in the Caribbean. Now I've been my uh, one of my newest um, things is, is painting scenes from the underwater world oh. in watercolor. Wow. So, um, but so that is breakthrough was a very significant piece for me. Mm -hmm. Another piece is a maelstrom. Maelstrom is the lady tumbling upside down in yes. her vo copper vortex. Yes. Yes. Um, that piece is really about falling into the creative void and trusting, trusting. It's not an unhappy piece. It's not, she's not being taken away by the maelstrom, but she is surrendering to it. Oh, Her see. face is a happy face. Um, it is, but sometimes in my meditations, I feel that way. I feel like I'm being overwhelmed and um, by this incredible force, this mm. incredible force and energy, and it's a life force. Yeah. And when I surrender to it, it just leads me to the most incredible places. Isn't that and that's what Maelstrom really tried to represent, because mm -hmm. that's why I've used the copper too, as yes. so that it doesn't become, a, um, it, it, it's, an, it's an energy a, force, yeah, you know. Not a dead uh, mm -hmm. or, or negative. Yeah. But, and you said there was a third one. The third one would be evolution. Mm -hmm. Now evolution is taking the step beyond. Um, it's like breakthrough in that it has the kind of, almost like volcano shape at the bottom mm -hmm. in ceramic and then the pieces come through. But unlike Breakthrough, she is, she is evolving. She has gone beyond. She has let go of limits. And she is learning about limitless possibilities. She's, you know, in, in a field of limitless possibilities. Mm. And that, that, that to me is where we can evolve to. Mm. You know, there was a, a time when I went through, I guess, what all um, women especially, I don't know, men I guess too, <laughs> when you feel like you have to um, find yourself, you mm -hmm. know, who am I? And, and what after, is my purpose? Yes, yeah. all of that. And then after a while it was right, 
no longer who am I, but who would I like to be? No longer finding oh. myself, but creating, another. creating myself mm. in each moment, recreating myself. Who is it that I want to be? And that to me is evolution, is when we become self-empowered to realize, no, I don't have, I can be anything I want to be, you know? Yes. This, is yeah. the, this is the feeling, this is where my journeys have led me. And that is the message that I'm sure you want to share with That's many people. That's what I would like to share with many people. And this is what my, this is the, what I'd like my sculptures to tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to remind mm -hmm. people that to uh, remind people. you're in control. Yeah, and and this, is nothing, this is nothing personal to me, you know. Mm -hmm. We just need to each take control of our own power, our own energy, and, mm -hmm. and, and follow our soul, follow our hearts. Do you think that um, many of the ailments that we have today may have come from the limitations that we put on ourselves and as a result mm -hmm. the, the quagmires that we tend to allow ourselves to fall into absolutely i mean there's no for me there is no doubt about that mm -hmm. i mean we're finding out every day more about the uh, mind body spirit connection mm -hmm. and um i i don't think we can any longer um kind of put on the blinders that whatever is happening to us is something attacking us from out mm -hmm. there Whatever is happening to us with an ailment is our body giving us a signal. Mm -hmm. Hey, pay attention. There's something wrong with your energy system. Mm -hmm. So you need to look at your energy system. <laughs> yeah. You know, taking the, the, the aspirin, taking the tablets, taking the medicines is only curing the symptoms. Yes. It's yeah. not going to the cause. Mm -hmm. You need to look at what is the deeper cause behind what's right. happening to me. Yeah. Apart from meditation, or does the meditation therefore lead you into other areas spiritually in terms of what you eat, um, other exercises yes. and things that you do. This is nothing to do with creating art. This is creating life mm. in every aspect. You know, um, I, I'm, I'm a wife. I've I have been married for 30 years. I mean, creating relationship has been an incredibly important part of my journey. Mm -hmm. And it, it's been a very successful one. I'm a mother. I'm going to be a grandmother soon. No, oh, congratulations. And bringing up children and um, bringing them into this life and um, guiding them and allowing them to be and let go. Mm, <laughs> let, yeah. letting, letting go, go is of the them. hard part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of that That's has been part of the learn. journey as well. Yes. And um, so, yes, you know, it has affected everything. Everything mm. I do, yes, the way I eat, the way I the way I think about what I do to my body mm -hmm. and how I recreate my body and um, just living joyfully, you know, yeah. following that inner yeah. voice that, that says, no, you don't want to go there. If your feet hurt, you stop walking, you know, <laughs> <laughs> literally. Listen to the messages. <laughs> Listen to the messages. <laughs> Were you always that spiritual? Did you grow up in a family with some depth of spirituality or religion or when did that breakthrough come but that the um, spiritual side of you develop I think I grew up in a pretty normal family I mean we you know normal Christian home not overly consciously mm -hmm. so um, then we went to boarding school in, in England mm -hmm. and had to be at church on Sunday of whether course. we liked it or not <laughs> and when I left church uh, when I left boarding school I not said never church. again <laughs> <laughs> as a lot of young people will rebel but I think I really started to develop my spirituality actually after I had my children and again I said I was going through that that sense of identity crisis oh. a feeling okay I, you know I'm I am a wife I am a mother but what about me I had actually stopped doing my art for several years while I was creating a family mm -hmm. and I think I had reached the point when something inside of me was crying to come out yeah. and it came it was at the, not a most not an easy time for me mm -hmm. because you know I, I was needed by the family but on the other hand I knew something was missing and I couldn't figure out what I had a good husband I had wonderful children why should I be unhappy yeah but there was something crying out and that's where I think that's where the journey really started mm. and the real soul seeking and saying well w why I need my there's something more here what more do I need? Yeah. I'm sure there are many people who go through that all the time. We, we mm -hmm. hear so much about this on television, about women who are having difficulty feeling trapped. Um, where did you 
make the first move? And how do you explain to your children mm -hmm. um, whether that was an unhappy time or not and how you manifested that yeah. unhappiness and, and what, what was the next step from there? Well, um, I don't think I even showed it physically in in the sense that no, I don't think it was it was something that I was you aware just felt of, inside, yeah. something that I felt, and I, I felt out of sorts in my body. But mm. no, I, I don't think I even made it verbal, or I tried not to. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, which but in it, itself is a problem yes, when you don't verbalize but, um, these things. I'm going to say the breakthrough came with books. Uh -huh. I mean, this was in maybe the the 70s the um, late 70s there was just so many wonderful books mm. self-empowerment right. books um, new age books of all sorts and i read avidly mm -hmm. i mean i just you know it's, it's when you ask for help the help will come yeah. it'll fall just into be your lap able to yes. be ready to receive it and i had always done a bit of yoga um, i did it as a pre um a prenatal exercise oh, yes. before mm. i had my children and learning to meditate, um, mm -hmm. that was the thing. And in my meditations, I kept getting this guidance. Mm -hmm. And the guidance comes, when you ask for help, it comes in any form you can imagine, through theater, through the arts, mm -hmm. through books, through, oh, rich, empowering books. <laughs> 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 you know, it, yes, it's there. Yes, the yes, answers yes. come, in, even in, in conversation with other people. Um, somehow or the other, something will just, Click, yes, click. Yeah. and the answers are there. Mm -hmm. And of course, the the more it happened, the more I you want to paid go attention, yes, and the yeah. more I went deeper into meditation, and I suddenly realized, ah, you know, mm -hmm. I need to start expressing myself again. And so I did, and that's when I started carving again full time. Yeah. And most of your work is in wood. Most of my work is in wood. Actually, mm -hmm. when I was in college, um, most of my work was in clay for bronzes or in stone oh. carving because in England, wood was not an easily accessible material. Mm -hmm. But when I moved to Belize, um, my husband is from Belize. Mm -hmm. And so um, after, we grad after he graduated, um, he did a dental course. He's a dental surgeon. Mm -hmm. We moved to Belize. And I lived, we lived there for five years. And um, I discovered the hardwoods of Belize. Oh, and that's yes. where a I started place. to explore and experiment with wood. Again, it was just tentatively in those first years. But once we had moved back to Jamaica, to Montego Bay, where we live now, and built our home up in Kemshat, mm -hmm. which is a lovely country um, mountain mm -hmm. house, there were some fantastic um, wood stumps, actually, that of the mahogany family oh, yeah. that had been cut many years ago, but the stumps were still on the property. So I went out with a chain, my husband went out with a chainsaw, <laughs> <laughs> and cut these stumps for me, and I started carving seriously in wood. Really? And I've been doing that now for since 1985. Now how difficult was it to change from bronze to wood? Actually it was completely different. It diffi it com it's a complete reversal because yeah. it, it's, more cl it's closer to stone carving because mm. the carving process is seeing what you want, the finished product, inside the block mm -hmm. and taking away what you don't want. Uh -huh. Whereas the, the clay modeling or wax modeling you do for bronzes is building, building up, up over yeah. an armature. And you can, you can make mistakes and you can <laughs> you yes. know, build it back up. But, but when with you're a carving, in, yeah. you, d you don't have that leeway. That's right. You make a mistake, so you have to change the concept. It's, it's a different, you have to even go in there thinking differently. You yeah. have to see what it is you want. Mm -hmm. Yes, the wood does talk to me as well. And where the wood grains are, you know, I, I, there's a bit of a spontaneous um, intercourse between me and the wood mm -hmm, once mm -hmm. it starts. But I tend to have a very strong idea before I begin. I see. And then I go into the wood pile and find just the right piece of wood, mm. you know. And um, the finishing, explain how you finish the wood. Okay, well, I start with very deep um, gouges, which are um, a kind of a U-shaped chisel. Mm -hmm. which takes out large chunks and then I go to narrower and narrower um, flatter and oh, flatter chisels yeah. and as I get close to the surface I use a wood rasp and then um, then sand then again from coarse to fine wood rasps and then from and coarse then to fine sandpaper sand mm -hmm. then I put on the finish and use wire um, the very fine wire wool and rub in antique furniture ah, finishes I see. 
I, see. I don't so, like a varnished finish. I, I, I want I want to see the natural wood. wood. Yes. yes, that's the beauty of it. It's, so the, I um, just use an oil finish. Uh, you yes, know, a to rubbed just bring oil out finish, the beauty yeah. of the wood, which is the way any wood should be treated anyway. I think so. To, I agree. To bring out the best in it. What about your children? How many do you have, and what mm -hmm. are their interests in the arts? Okay, I have two children. Uh, my son Charles is um, now twenty nine. And um, he's very talented in his ability to draw, mm -hmm. but he's never really used it. In high school, I thought, ah, you know, here we, I have some wonderful drawings of his that yes. I have hung at home. But he, he decided to go into um, computers, mm -hmm. as, you know, kid, the, that yes, age I want to do. Today, yes. And actually, he's now working in telecommunications technology, and um, he lives in Atlanta with his wife. And they're expecting my grandchild. Oh, lovely. <laughs> and he has not really followed up on, on that as a creative process. I'm sure it will come It'll back come. to him one yeah. of the days. Sure. My daughter is 26, mm -hmm. and she is an architect. I think somehow oh, she, she, got <laughs> she, relived, she lived that dream for yes. me. Yes. She's an incredible artist as well. Mm -hmm. um, very, very different in style from me in that she is very minimalist and very modern. Ah. Um, very geometric in shapes, mm -hmm. but very exciting and wonderful use of color. And of course, perfect for her type of architecture. Yes, yes, yes. And um, she and her husband are both architects and they live in Palm Beach, ah. Florida. Oh, really? How large is your collection and do you have a gallery in uh, Jamaica? And where do you go mm -hmm. from here? What, what are you planning to do for the rest of your time? I no, I don't keep a large collection. I've you know I've had to borrow back some pieces actually for this show to bring so many pieces in, mm -hmm. and a lot of the pieces are relatively new. I um, I am not planning another real big showing or anything like that. I think I'm just going to place these into exhibitions or into galleries. Mm -hmm. I don't have a gallery in Jamaica, but I have had several shows in the hotels because yes. Montego Bay is a resort. Of course. Um, and in the winter season, we, we, I, we do collectively with the Western Fine Arts Group. Mm -hmm. we, oh, or, or individually, we put, in, put on shows that are open to both the visitors and the um, local community. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not really planning to do anything like that. I want to spend a little more time exploring texture. And I don't want to have to be worried about end product. I just want to play. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, a whole new um, medium that I have been playing with recently, and that's oh. glass. Glass? Oh. I've been doing stained glass panels, mm -hmm. but I have also would like to do some stained glass in three-dimensional objects. Ooh. Um, I really want to learn to blow glass as well, but I don't know quite how I'm going to <laughs> manage that well, one. Well, <laughs> use your theory, but break one through of these that days, one as well. One of these days. I, when I say I don't mind, I don't know, where, because I, I can't do that in Jamaica. I'd have to go somewhere have to, where so, they have where that sort of I facility. I suppose Italy is probably one of the finest uh, places yes. to go for that. <laughs> Italy would be the best place. Yes. <laughs> I'm hoping to, that something comes, comes up a little closer to home. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to go too far from home. <laughs> I love Italy. I mean, I spent time there yes, when I was nice. in college and I nice. loved it. Oh, so the, the arts is one of the, the arts. greatest places for the arts. Yes. yes. Uh, living in London for that, um, you know, over my college years was just extraordinary being able to travel to, to, travel to Europe. Europe. And, that was and of course, I was so inspired, yes. you know, by, yes. the, by the art there. That is an experience mm -hmm. that I, I often encourage young people, yes. if they have the opportunity, mm -hmm. to, to take it and yes. go as, as Yes, far my, my daughter did field. several semesters of yes. Her universe, of her architecture course in Italy. Yes, and yes. Um, that was a you know great experience yes, for her. Yes, I'm sure. Uh, you lived in London and you lived in the United States for a while and went back went back to Jamaica. I lived in Lo well, I lived in London um, and at college and my mm -hmm. husband and I got married in London and then we went back to live in Belize and we were there for five years and then we moved to the States mainly because with two small children I was a little um, nervous about the health and education facilities Care, yeah. and so um, we moved to the States um, we moved to Florida mm -hmm. but um, I did have a yearning to go, go home to the Caribbean. and um, there became an opening for a dentist in Montego Bay oh. and so we went for actually a three-year contract and we've um, 
in traveling around, we came across this land in the mountains, uh -huh. in the Kemshot Mountains, just above Montego Bay. It's only about eight miles out of Montego Bay, easy access, mm -hmm. but you're in a world apart. Oh, wow. Fell in love bought the land, built a home, <laughs> and we've been there ever since. Ever since. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where I have my studio. I see. It's so inspiring. No, that's you know? great. And I paint the, uh, my paintings are of the landscape and mm -hmm. of the flowers around me. And, um, oh, yes. And also of the, you know, I set up still life objects. A great and, environment for yes. the artist. And we're very close to the sea, so we can still do our scuba, scuba diving. diving. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like you have a wonderful set, a, w a wonderful set for life and uh, <laughs> the spiritual base with which you come adds tremendously to it. It's been a pleasure talking to you. It's been a pleasure looking at your art and I thank you so much for the time. Oh, thank you so much for talking to me and for and giving me a chance to express myself in this medium. Yes, <laughs> all, all enjoy it.